yeah uh, so we'll start hello can you hear me hello hello yeah i am able to hear you yeah uh, sorry i have put my mic on mute yeah, yeah no problem so we'll start okay. yeah. i'll be putting my mic on mute no yeah okay required i'll ping you yeah sure so uh, what i'll do is that i'll just uh, take the theoretical uh, part first and then we will uh, get into the application so uh, i'll just put few points in uh, associate we will try to understand that and maybe we will uh, come to the application and uh, do the configuration and see the uh, the transaction part of it Yeah. Uh, so I think you are seeing my screen. So I'll just uh, give high level understanding what is inside this uh, fixed asset module and what are the things that we can do. And uh, we will also see few uh, business scenarios like uh, how to uh, what do you call handle this particular scenarios and all those things. So so to start with the asset uh, module. So basically we have addition. So addition is nothing but we are adding asset from either through the invoice or we are adding through the manual addition. So we don't have, let's say we don't have uh, the invoice copy or something. So for those cases, what we can do is that we can do the normal uh, manual addition. Okay. So apart from that, uh, we have an option to import it from the AP module. So which means we have uh, the AP invoice. So through this invoice, what we will do is that uh, we will uh, basically uh, import the invoice and we will run a program called mass addition. So using that, we will basically import it. Just give me one minute. What is this AFBDA? Yeah, uh, this we are not using it here. So this is uh, part of Fusion application. Uh, so we can remove this option. So we don't have uh, this feature here. So instead, uh, we have uh, something called uh, WebAD. Yeah. So uh, yeah. these are the three options that we have in the EBS application. So either I can do a manual addition or I can do web ID or I can do the AP invoice. Okay. So these are the three uh, modes of adding the assets. Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. So after adding the asset, uh, so basically if you see, if, let's say I have an, a laptop. So before 10 years, I might have uh, bought for, let's say 50,000. Mm. So I cannot sell the same laptop for uh, 50,000 today because the market price might increase and also the usage cost is there and multiple factors involved in it like the RAM and the other things. So basically I'll have the rate of uh, depreciation to calculate this asset called laptop. So why do we need to run this depreciation? So depreciation is nothing but it will allow us to 
or you can reduce the particular amount from the actual uh, 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 the original cost of the asset okay so he we have uh, different modes of calculating the depreciation so we have a straight line method and we have return down value method so return down value method will be used mostly for the indian customers where this is part of an uh, complaint uh, so to have it as and the uh, return down value method and apart from that for few cases we have the straight line method as well so what is the difference between straight line and what is the difference between uh, the return down value so straight line is something that let's say i say 10% so which means till this asset is getting retired so till that time, till that time so i'll have only 10% as in depreciation let's say uh, my asset cost is 1 lakh so on this 10% uh, is 10000 10, okay so similarly for each period i'll have uh, the 10000 as in depreciation amount so now what is a uh, return down value method <clears throat> so return down value method is something that it always calculate on the basis of uh, the current cost of the asset or net book value okay so based on the system will generated so it will not have same uh, depreciation for all over the period okay mm -hmm. and apart from that we have another method called production based uh, depreciation so what will happen in the production based uh, depreciation is that uh, let's say i have uh, 10 equipments with me or 10 machinery so i am into manufacturing business so i have this 10 equipments with me so this machinery is uh, considered as an asset uh, in the books of accounts so now if i want to have the depreciation for this so i cannot have as an 10% or 20% because if you see the normal asset is different from the machinery because here there might be a uh, possible cases where for few assets i might not uh, run for a week or whatever reason so i might not run <coughs> maybe let's say two machineries i'm not running the rest of the eight machineries i'm running for let's say 12 hours in a day so this case i don't want to calculate depreciation for the machinery which didn't run for this two days because the the machinery was not utilized uh, completely so i will avoid calculating depreciation so how system will calculate is that uh, based on the production that we make okay so these are the methods that we have in terms of uh, calculating the depreciation okay and uh, apart from that we have few adjustments in uh, fixed asset model so one is that we can say cost adjustment <coughs> and another one is uh, unit adjustment so cost adjustment is something that let's say my current uh, cost of the asset is 10000 so for whatever reason maybe market price or whatever reason i wanted to adjust the cost of the asset so what i'll do is that i'll go to the particular asset and i'll change the cost of the asset so when i change this particular uh, cost of the asset the original cost will remain same but my current cost will uh, change to the latest one let's say from 1 lakh to 80000 so it will be changed okay so similarly we have the uh, unit adjustment so unit adjustment is again from 10 quantity to 9 quantity if i wanted to have the the things adjusted so i can use this unit adjustment okay and uh, we have a uh, transfer of asset so uh, so why do we need transfer of asset so basically when we say uh, fixed asset module there are a few prerequisites in order to uh, uh, consider before we start our implementation project so what we will do is that before we uh, complete all those things basically we will uh, get the data from the legacy environment so how are we getting the uh, data from the legacy environment so how we have the location flex field in uh, oracle finance so similarly we have in the legacy system as well so in a different form so how do we want to map or how do we want to manage it so we will do the mapping between the legacy system and our system and we will import the asset into our uh, new oracle uh, system okay so here let's say i have an uh, asset in the uh, building called a and uh, under a particular resource now i wanted to change it to maybe the department uh, finance so what i will do is that i'll do an asset transfer so whatever the tra transaction that i'm doing it here either changing the employee or transferring the ownership uh, to the another employee or changing the location or department whichever changes i'm making this will be in transfer of asset 
okay and then we have uh, the retirement part so retirement is something that i have procured the asset and i have depreciated the asset and in between i done the cost adjustment or whatever it is and i have used it and i have transferred from one department to another department and things and now what i have is that i have something called retirement so the life of asset might be ended or the other case maybe i don't want to hold this particular asset for a longer run and i wanted to just sell it so to sell this what i will do is that i'll retire this particular asset so i can either retire at the end of the period which means after we consume the entire cost of the asset or i can uh, straight away sell in the next month as well okay so this is what we call uh, the uh, retirement so basically for the retirement we have multiple conventions so if you see so these are the three conventions that we have okay so when we say mid month so which means what system will do is that let's say uh, i have added an asset uh, in the month of january 15th let's say in this case what system will do is that in case of mid system will calculate half of the depreciation for the first month and when we are retiring this asset system will calculate another half okay and when we say following what will happen is that system will not calculate for the first month system will start calculating for the second month but system will give the complete uh, depreciation for the last month when we are retiring this asset okay so similarly we have current so current is nothing but a system will calculate depreciation for the uh, first month when we are adding this asset but whereas the uh, depreciation for the final month when we are retiring this asset it will not happen okay so these are the three conventions we have so basically this will determine like when to calculate the uh, uh, depreciation and when to not calculate so th this uh, impacts our depreciation process so when we are deciding uh, the uh, retirement uh, pro rate convention so we should be a bit conscious in terms of deciding whether we wanted to go to the current following or mid okay and then we have something called reinstatement so reinstatement is something kind of an uh, retirement reversal so retirement reversal in the sense let's say i i have an asset called a and i have uh, the unit of uh, 10 let's say so In, instead of retiring five assets what i have done is that i have retired entire uh, 10 assets so in this case i don't want to retire everything so i wanted to have my five assets so what i'll do is that i can reinstate this process which means the retirement process whatever i have done will be uh, reversed okay so then uh, apart from this we have the period closure so what is period closure so period closure is something that uh, we will uh, process all our mass addition so mass addition is nothing but uh, here for adding the asset we will have so for mass addition we will have the post addition program involved in it so after we are closing this things and after we check our depreciation and the relevant entries and uh, once we do the reconciliation between our gl module and uh, fixed asset module so what we will do is that uh, we will basically close our period so before closing the period we should be a bit conscious in terms of uh, considering the prerequisite because uh, this is an hard closure okay uh, okay uh, so what is hard closure and what is soft closure so soft closure is something that i can reopen so if you see gl period so i can reopen the period unless uh, i have freezed uh, my auditing and everything is done and i have done the permanent closure so that is when i cannot reopen the period but uh, other than those scenarios i can reopen the periods very well so that is the reason uh, we are calling those particular period closure as an soft closure so hard closure is something that i cannot reopen similarly here in fixed asset if you see so this is an hard closure so i cannot reopen this particular period in the fixed asset module so let's say i have a uh, recall unprocessed mass addition uh, assets so i cannot import this into uh, the period that has closed so the only option that i have is to uh, push in the next period and have it imported okay so these are the options that we have so at high level so these are the uh, functionalities that we will be looking at and uh, these are the things uh, we will be having so do you have any queries or anything
just I want to know, can yeah. you recap uh, depreciation types? Depreciation. depreciation types. Because in this uh, only run depreciation is there. So yeah. you have discussed uh, two, three types were there. No? So that was what I'll make a note of it. Yeah. Uh, depreciation in the sense you are saying the different modes of calculating, like uh, yeah, like uh, the straight line method and uh, yeah, yeah, straight line method. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I procured an asset uh, called a laptop. Okay. So I procured this on let's say first uh, January, twenty twenty. And the uh, depreciation method that I used here is straight line method. Okay, so let's consider this percentage as an uh, ten percent. And uh, asset cost is let's say uh, one lakh. So in this case, how system will calculate uh, the depreciation is that. Uh, if you see here the original cost as the current cost, let's consider a uh, current cost. So current cost of this asset is one lakh. So on this one lakh, we say ten percent. So which means this will calculate only on the original cost, but not on the current cost. So in this case, our original cost and the current cost is same. That is one lakh. Okay, so this is kind of a predefined uh, process where every period that system will calculate 10,000 as an depreciation. So in this case, for January, system will calculate 10,000. Okay, so my current uh, cost of the asset, that will be 90,000. Similarly, we will have it for February. So I'll have 80,000 since my depreciation cost will be 10,000. So similarly, okay. this will keep retiring till uh, the asset cost reaches zero. So when this will reach zero is on the 10th month. Okay. So this is a uh, simple calculation. So based on this uh, straight line method, basically system is going to calculate. Okay. And uh, apart from this, so we have something called a uh, return down value method. So let's take the same scenario and in this case what will happen is that so the original cost is 1 lakh and the current cost is 90,000 so it is uh, 10,000 so since this is first month it is uh, 10,000 and let's say the next month uh, opening would be 90,000, okay? So next month, when system is calculating depreciation, it will calculate on 90,000, but not on the uh, one lakh. So this month depreciation would be 9,000. So deducting 9,000, it will be 81,000. So here we will have 8,100. So similarly, we will uh, reach out to zero. Okay. Okay. And apart from that, we have production. So production is based on the uh, capacity. Uh, so, so this will uh, depends on the uh, production, the unit. Uh, so how, how many hours we have run it? So let's take, uh, what do you call the machinery? So here, original cost would be one lakh. So another asset, so this is one lakh. So let's assume that for this particular uh, period, I didn't run this machine. So, so in this case, system will not calculate depreciation for this. So depreciation would be zero. But whereas for this particular uh, asset, it has run. So it will consider 10%, which means 10,000. Okay, so these are the uh, widely used uh, depreciation method that we have. So apart from this, so we have few other options as well. So we have something called formula and then uh, we have uh, something called flat 
and we have table based so based on the requirement we can configure uh, the uh, depreciation method but if you see uh, as a whole these are the uh, the depreciation method that is being used widely in case of manufacturing unit so this is the uh, method mostly companies will prefer so apart from that uh, we have uh, this one return on value method so if you see middle east and india and uh, singapore most of the clients they use return on value method and uh, very rarely we will use the straight line method okay yeah any other doubt yeah anything else or we can okay. do the application yeah you can okay yeah so i'm sharing my screen so here if you see so we have a setup for asset module so there is a prerequisite for this so before we come to the uh, asset module configuration we will need our uh, this thing what you call the gl module setup okay so in this case what i do is that i'll I, I, the assumption is that we have already have the uh, gl module with us which means it is configured and it is ready to do test the transaction so at this stage what i can do is that i can directly come here and i can start the configuration part so the first configuration would be books control sorry it is uh, system options yeah uh, it is uh, session it's fine so if you see here i cannot edit this particular uh, configuration so this will be applicable as a global so which means i use same structure for all my books of accounts or asset books i can say so here we have uh, three categories so one is uh, that category flex wheel so categories we can say major and minor we have it so major is something that uh, let's say we have furniture so we call furniture as an uh, high level classification and under furniture we have a uh, multiple options like we have table chair and we have office equipment uh, so whatever the uh, kind of an uh, detailed part of it we can ca classify as a minor uh, category and at major category we can give a uh, high level information either it is furniture or some kind of office supplies or the office equipment we can specify that so that is what we are saying in the category okay and this category can be changed at the later point of time as well yes we will have the financial impact here but still there is a possibility that we can change it let's say business has classified a uh, chair as an office equipment instead of having it having this particular uh, asset as an uh, furniture so what i'll do is that i'll do the uh, change of uh, category so this particular option is available for us and uh, to have this as a base so we have this category structure so after uh, completing this configuration we will see what are the flex field structures that we have and uh, what are the values that we have inside it okay so this is about the category flex field and then we have the location flex field and location flex field is primarily used to identify whether this particular asset is in let's say chennai or hyderabad or delhi or mumbai any place so this will contain even the floor building and uh, city and the state uh, details of the uh, uh, location so that i can track it even i can include my department also in this it is not mandatory to have it but we have an option if you wanted to add we can add this okay so the, since this is an vision environment we are seeing all those options already created and frozen so if not what we can do is that we can attach our uh, or call uh, the flex field values but once we have attached it and we have saved it this will be frozen okay 
So after that, we cannot change it. So this is an one-time configuration. And then we have asset key. So asset key is used uh, to track or identify the special, uh, what do you call the uh, special information of the asset. So we can have this as an uh, the uh, segment, so that we can uh, input our uh, values there, and we can utilize to track the asset or to find uh, the asset, the exact asset. Okay. So apart from that, we have this uh, starting and last asset number used. So which means here, if you see, I can have three lakh thirty thousand. Uh, I mean two lakh thirty seven six fourteen assets. I can use it. Okay. So we'll be defining it, uh, it more in terms of uh, real time. But uh, since this is an vision environment, so we have defined it like three lakh thirty seven thousand. Okay. So any doubts here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll I'll just navigate uh, to the fetch field. So I'll start with category. So in category, if you see, so I have two segments. So one is major, and the other one is minor. So we have this value set. So inside value set, so basically we will have all this uh, validation and everything put in. So based on this, we will have either it is an independent or dependent segment. So if you see this particular value called major category. So this is an independent because this doesn't depend on any other value. So when I say furniture, I don't need to depend on any other value. But when I say chair, it should depend on furniture or the office supplies. Okay. <coughs> so now if you see the uh, minor category, we will have the dependent uh, value set because this is depending on the uh, major category. Okay, so basically we will load the values for uh, on top of uh, this uh, value set called Vision FA Major Category. So similarly, we will load values for the FA Minor Categories as well. Yeah, and then we have. Okay, and then we have the location. So location, it is not limited to have only this particular segment. As I told, we can have the uh, what do you call uh, the floor and uh, department as well. So based on the requirement, we can add the segments and we can make use of this particular value. So similarly, we will have the value set for this as well. So we will load our values. So in this case, when we have business operation inside uh, India, so which means this will not make any sense to us. So when we have the operations more than two or three countries, so that is when country will uh, make sense. Or maybe similarly, we, we can just look uh, those uh, fields and we can uh, map the different uh, segments here. Okay, so far now we have country, we have state, city, and we have building. Yeah, so similarly, we have the uh, value set for the uh, asset key as well. So asset key here, uh, we are not using for the uh, greater extent uh, because what we are doing is that we are just showing uh, the asset key. So we can just keep an, uh, a value here. So whether active, inactive, or maybe whatever we wanted to capture so that we can capture it here. So for example, let's say the legacy system has a value called uh, mark for sales. 
So if you wanted to capture those information, maybe we can make use of this field. So while we are importing the assets, maybe we can uh, use those uh, configurations and we can achieve it. So similarly, based on the requirement, we will have the asset keys uh, fields built in. Okay, so once we are uh, done with our segment uh, or the structure configuration, so what we will do is that we will basically uh, lo load the values for the asset. So I'll just take the category field. Okay, so if you see, so, so we have a lot of uh, values filled in. So, so in real time, we will not have auto on the asset and the other categories since this is a vision application. So people has uh, created a lot of this thing. So usually we will have buildings, we will have furniture and uh, we will have office supplies. So if you just come down, we, we will have the minor categories to each of the uh, major category. So here, if you see, we can define this as and maybe let's say we are into the construction business and we will have uh, buildings uh, uh, what you call constructed maybe in a span of six months. So we will create this as an CIP asset that is construction in progress. And we will acquire this particular asset once the construction and all those activities are done. So we will have the category as in building and under building, we can specify the building name or whatever the inputs that we wanted to give so that we can specify it here. Okay, so this is about the category. So similarly, we have it for the location and the other things where we will fill in the values and uh, we will have uh, the values loaded. Yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. So after we uh, load our values, so basically what we will have to do is that we will have to create our, we'll have to attach the asset key, whatever we created there. So we will have to do it here. So let's say, I have an asset that is created there, so I'm just uh, adding it here. So unless I add it here, I'll not be use it uh, in the application when I'm creating the asset. So this applies for the location and uh, the categories as well. So if you see here locations, so I'll just say the uh, maybe this location that I have added in the flux field structure. So I say this location will be added. So I will I can use this location. Similarly, I have the categories as well. So categories, this will uh, have other, uh, what do you call, uh, the other configurations as well. So maybe I'll take this uh, at later point of time. So before that, I'll, I'll take this one, the calendar part. So to start with the calendar, so basically our uh, fixed asset calendar should sync with the GL calendar. So unless this is in the sync, we will not have the accounting information passing through uh in a sequence so let's say i have uh, april calendar there in uh, gl and here i have the normal calendar or the uh, us calendar so that is starting from the jan to december so whereas my gl period is starting from april to march so when the uh, system is not in sync so let's say uh, i'm in the second month of the year so in this case my asset period would be on the february month but whereas my GL would be on the May month. So system will say that the period is not open, but whereas we cannot open the period also just like that, because we need uh, the approval and the other things from the finance sets as well. So for these complications, the, uh, the standard approach is that we will have the same calendar as like GL, okay? So here, if you see, we have fiscal calendar. So in terms of calendar, we have three configurations. So first thing is on the physical calendar, then we have uh, the depreciation calendar, then we have prorate uh, calendar. So we will see each. So first I'll start with the physical calendar. So if you see physical calendar, so what I'll say is that my calendar will, so when I say fiscal calendar, it doesn't mean that I should start the, uh, uh, what do you call the date from 1st of April. So I can start even from uh, 1st of February. So that depends on my uh, configuration. 
but provided I have the same configuration in GL as well. So here, let's say I have a period called a period starting from 1st January. So which means I'll say 1st January to 31st December. And mid-year, I would say it is, it is on 1st July. Okay. And I will say the fiscal year, that is 2020. Or maybe if you wanted to do the data migration for, let's say, three to four years also. So for those cases, uh, respective years, I will give it here. Okay. So that's all about our uh, fiscal year uh, configuration. Then we have the normal calendar. So basically we will attach the fiscal calendar that we created in the earlier configuration and uh, we will uh, we will start our period. So, uh, so let's create a simple calendar. So I'll just say uh, Tata. So I say 1st January to 31st January, 31st December. So my fiscal year would be uh, 2020. Let's say I uh, give it for, let's say, three years. Okay, so I open till uh, 2022. So the next next configuration is to have it for uh, the uh, depreciation calendar. So here I'm attaching as an uh, what do you call uh, the uh, the fiscal calendar what we created earlier. So I say it is 12 period. So similarly, I'll create for the rest of the periods as well. Okay, so I'm done with the uh, calendar part. So the next configuration would be to create the prorate convention. <clears throat> Okay, so here I mark this particular flag called depreciate when placed in service. So uh, when placed in service is nothing but when actually we have pursued and we wanted to start uh, this asset uh, as an active. So the moment we make this particular asset as an active, system will start calculating the depreciation for that. So let's say I give uh, the period uh, for this as an, uh, what do you call, uh, the mid-month. So let me use the mid-month as an uh, prorate. So I'll say 15 January 
Actually, this much we don't need it. Uh, I overpressed it, uh, so it's not stopping actually. I think this process is not stopping. So what I'll do is that I'll close this form and I'll reopen it. Yes. Yeah, you are saying something? Not able to see your screen. Yeah, yeah, that's what the uh, farm is closed. Uh, so I'm yeah. Okay. Okay, so we are done with uh, our uh, this thing, the prorate convention. So the prorate convention that we have uh, took is at uh, mid month. So which means I said 15th of January. So system will calculate uh, for the first month, it will calculate off. And for the last month, the system will uh, calculate off since this is in uh, mid month. So in case of uh, current period, so system will calculate uh, the entire depreciation for the uh, first period. And when we are retiring, at that case, the system will not consider uh, depreciation. So it will just take uh, or consume only the retirement uh, related cost and the entries. Yeah, 
so we are done with our uh, what do you call the uh, the calendar configuration and uh, we also did our uh, flood field and we have seen the uh, values of the flood field and next configuration would be to start our uh, book controls so book control is the place where actually we will create our asset book so whatever asset that we are adding so this this will be always on top of uh, the uh, uh, this particular asset book so whichever uh, we are having it so also we have asset book uh, security so which we will see it after we complete all our configuration okay so i create and uh, let me create an uh, asset book called tata so here if you see so we have <coughs> two kinds of uh, asset books so one is that uh, corporate book and the other one is tax book so apart from that we have budget book which is not widely used so mostly we will have the tax and corporate book so the transaction that we are doing that is transferring the asset or retiring or calculating the depreciation or doing any sort of uh, adjustment so everything will be fall or it will be captured in the corporate book so tax book is for the compliance part so what will happen is that we have something called a uh, transfer so in this transfer what will happen is that whatever transaction that we have made in a given period in the corporate book so this transaction will be uh, moved or copied to the tax book for the compliance purpose okay so this is the only purpose of having the tax book so apart from that corporate book is the one where actually we will do the transaction or add asset or depreciate asset okay so let me take uh, this uh, ledger called tata auto and uh, let me pick the calendar that we created and current period is february and here if you see i have two options either i can say evenly or i can say by days so by days is nothing but depreciation will be calculated on each day but whereas when we say evenly which means it is going to divide into periods and it is going to calculate the depreciation so that is the difference between evenly and uh, by days so i don't want to have it uh, by days even the depreciation calendar that i defined is for the period so i'll select evenly okay yeah so we have option here depreciate if retired in the first year so which means let's say i add an asset in the month of february and i wanted to retire this particular asset uh, so can i calculate the depreciation so when i enable this particular checkbox i can calculate the depreciation when i'm retiring in the first year itself okay so apart from that we have uh, the accounting rules so in accounting rules basically we have a few uh, configuration that we need so most of the configuration is kind of an additional information for us so if you see allow revaluation so when we say retire revaluation reserve which means when we uh, retire particular asset so basically system will calculate the uh, what do you call the revaluation cost of the particular assets so i'll say a uh, revalue for ytd as well and then we have amortized or uh, revaluation receipt okay so amortization and adjustments both are same it is like how to be uh, retire this particular asset so that is what are uh, going to make difference in terms of uh, amortization and apart from that uh, what else we have allow cost sign changes so this is uh, understandable so these are the uh, basic configuration that we need and uh, we have a uh, group depreciation so which means if we have asset group so asset group is nothing but let's say we have a collection of asset which will be group which can be grouped in a particular asset let's say 
we have uh, furniture A, B, C. So if we wanted to group it, so we can group it. So based on this grouping, we can run the depreciation. So that is what we have uh, here as an allow group depreciation. So I don't want to have uh, the grouping of assets. So I'm just uh, disabling this option for now. <clears throat> and then we have the account code combination that we will have to give it uh, for the particular asset. So unless we give the uh, accounts here, so we will not be able to generate the relevant uh, entries when we are retiring the asset. So let me give uh, each uh, thing for the asset. Yeah, so we are done with our configuration. So we have our asset book called Tata FA book. So we have uh, created our books. So next step would be to create the categories. So similarly how we have created for the location. So now we will have to create uh, the same step for the categories as well. So what we will do is that, so we will take uh, the particular category and we will assign it to the, uh, what do you call, uh, so let me take vehicle. And uh, let me assign to a category. Okay, I think uh, the values are assigned. So I'll do one thing, I'll just add a new value to this. And after that, maybe we will uh, have the categories added.
yeah so we have added the category so maybe we will add it here yeah so we have added our category and then if you see here so we have a lease and we have a non lease and we have lease hold improvement so when we are using the lease or so we have a different module called lease management so apart from that if you wanted to use the lease concept inside this uh, asset module so we can enable this option called lease so which means this category that i am attaching to the asset will be an lease asset so we don't want to lease it so we wanted to have this as a capitalized asset so what i'm choosing is non lease so which means this is a capitalized and here we can see that uh, there is an option called lease or ownership so this is an owned so i'm selecting ownership so we can see that uh, two option one is uh, physical inventory and the other one is uh, capitalized so we have capitalized it uh, so when we will have this option is that so basically there are a few assets that will be construction in process or pip so for those cases what will happen is that uh, uh, we will have this capitalization flag enabled okay so these are the options that we have in the header information so what i'm doing is i'm attaching the book here and let me attach the relevant uh, account course so whatever we are seeing it uh, in the blue so this are the ones that is mandatory yeah so we have defined or we have uh, given the required account code combinations and uh, the next setup would be to give uh, the depreciation method so 
shall take a simple straight line method and we will see in the uh, depreciation method while we are defining it so what are the cases that we have yeah so we are good with it so i'm just uh, giving it Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, so we have uh, defined our categories as well. So in terms of uh, configuration, almost uh, we are done. And uh, uh, we are good to add the asset. So before that, I'll just uh, say one point on the, uh, the depreciation method. and one point on the security of the books so first we will see the uh, methods of depreciation what are the configurations that we have yeah, yeah. so here if you see so i'll just give a naming convention for my depreciation method and i have a method type so here if you see i have production based depreciation which we saw and we have flat so flat will be used mostly for the straight line method so which we saw that uh, 10% case and for return down value method also we will use flat so after selecting the flat what we will do is that instead of selecting from the cost we will say net book value so what is the uh, meaning or how will it uh, impact when i select cost or when i select net book value so when i select cost which means system is going to check the cost and give the depreciation calculation but whereas when i say net book value so after uh, detecting the depreciation so my net book value might have uh, reduced to maybe 90000 or 80000 based on the percentage that we have given so in this case what uh, what the system will do is that basically system will uh, calculate the depreciation and it will give us the net book value and system will calculate certain percentage on the net book value whatever we are assigning it here okay so if it is a uh, straight line method we will choose cost if it is return down value method we will choose net book value okay so similarly we have uh, the production table and calculator formula so formula is kind of uh, we will write a certain formula to derive the uh, depreciation amount okay so th this one is widely used basically the flat one and rarely we will use also the production so table as a one basically we will uh, have uh, the uh, method okay any doubt yeah uh, so so I, i was saying about the uh, method type just um
హలో యా సరే యా సో ఐ వాస్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయినింగ్ అబౌట్ ది డిప్రిషియేషన్ మెథడ్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ హియర్ సో ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ ది స్ట్రైట్ లైన్ మెథడ్ బేసిక్లీ వీ విల్ చూస్ ఫ్లాట్ అండ్ వీ విల్ సే ది ఇట్ ఈస్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ ది కాస్ట్ సో విచ్ మీన్స్ సిస్టమ్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు క్యాల్కులేట్ ఆన్ ది ఒరిజినల్ కాస్ట్ దట్ వీ హ్యావ్ గివెన్ సో దట్ ఈస్ ఆన్ ది వన్ ల్యాక్ ఓకే సో వెన్ వీ సే ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆన్ ది నెట్ టు క్వాలి సో దిస్ ఇస్ దిస్ ఇస్ బేసిక్లీ ఫార్ ది రిటర్న్ డౌన్ వ్యాల్యూ మెథడ్ so where we will say it will calculate on the basis of uh, net book value i mean uh, the current cost of the book okay and then we have the production so production if you see so this will be always uh, based on our cost since uh, we have we, we we have production based uh, depreciation okay and then we have uh, calculated so calculated is something that uh, we will uh, based on our calculation so whatever we are assigning it so based on that we will uh, calculate the we will calculate the depreciation okay so then we have uh, the formula so formula is something that uh, based on the uh, the conditions that we are giving it here so based on that system will uh, calculate the depreciation okay so we can just give the uh, formula and uh, we can test the formula uh, whether it is working fine yeah uh, so this are the uh, uh, things that we have it uh, in the depreciation method and uh, if you see here so we have the uh, uh, depreciation basis so i'm just uh, using the recoverable cost uh, that is default so basically it is uh, the recoverable cost will be calculated based on this uh, rule that we have given it here and uh, i have mentioned this depreciate uh, in year uh, retired so which means uh, when i am retiring this particular asset depreciation is applicable and i can just click the rate and i can give the uh, basic depreciation rate either it is 5% or 10% okay so we have defined uh, the depreciation as well so the last thing on the configuration part we have is uh, the security okay so we have uh, two things so this is part of our multi r access control so here if you see so basically we will uh, have uh, the security defined uh, for our books so here what i'll do is that i'll, I'll say maybe some uh, at xyz and okay i didn't define asset organization specifically yeah so basically the purpose of having this particular uh, option is that so let's say we have uh, 50 books in our uh, this thing so there are uh, two possible ways to handle the asset uh, security so one way of handling is that let's say there is a case where we have one asset book which will be maintained by our headquarters or the corporate office so for those cases we will not need this security since it is handled only by one specific uh, business unit or the operating unit okay so there will be cases where it will be maintained by the respective uh, offices or the branch offices so for those cases uh, is what we, we will need the security so security will apply on the basis of uh, the unit or the operating unit and uh, the asset book that we are giving okay so this are the configurations that we have so let's try to add an asset and uh, we will try to depreciate it 
so i'll say uh, assert under assert i'll say assert work branch so I, i'll say this is a laptop So I'll select the category that we created. So I'll say this is in a uh, ten quantity. So this is an capitalized asset. So I'll just uh, mention the tag ID. Okay. So I'm done with the uh, basic uh, information that a uh, system need to create an asset. So I'll just say continue, and I'll add the financial information of the uh, book. Okay. So the current cost of the asset would be one lakh. Okay. So we have added an asset for the value of one lakh, and since this is not a migrated uh, this thing, I don't have any OTG balance, or I don't have any. accumulated depreciation okay so i don't have the salvage value of it as well and uh, the depreciation method i have taken is uh, straight line method and you can see here the date placed in service is 29th of february since this is our first period and uh, based on the configurations that we did and attach the uh, pro rate convention for the asset category So system has picked in the pro rate convention from our configurations that we have given, and our configuration is mid month. So which means the configurations that we have given is that uh, from 15th of February. So basically, system will calculate if this is an uh, retirement that is happening. So how does system want to have the uh, depreciation and the other thing? Okay, so based on the configuration, system has uh, auto populated all those values. and apart from that if you see here so we have a column called the uh, group asset so group asset is used uh, when we wanted to have uh, the grouping of assets so we saw in the earlier thing so we didn't enable this particular functionality so i'm just leaving this uh, open okay so we have filled in uh, enough uh, inputs at whatever system needs it so i'll just uh, go ahead and i'll make this to continue okay so i am done with the configuration so i'll just say 10 quantities and i'll say employee maybe a arun yeah so similarly we will uh, have the location also defined uh, for this particular unit so let's take a, a unit here okay so i'm done with uh, the uh, assigning particular uh, uh, location to this particular asset and the employees so i have given unit change to 10 and i mean here i'm just trying to assign this particular unit to employee arun Yeah, so this is our uh, asset book that is Tata uh, 
book and uh, the category that we used is tata major and uh, tata minor so this is our category and we can see our tag number so this would be uh, this would stay as a reference point for us and now we can see the financial inquiry so after clicking this when we click the financial inquiry so we will get the details of this particular asset so we can see that we don't have any depreciation and the other things involved here since we just added the asset we didn't do any action towards it so we will just try to run the depreciation and we will see how this uh, financial information is impacting okay so here we can see only the addition so the addition is done so the cost is 1 lakh yeah so we are done with it uh, so let me copy this uh, invoice number and uh, let me process the depreciation so to process the depreciation so the navigation would be from here i'll select the depreciation so here i would say run so i'm just selecting a book and i'm not closing this period so i'm just leaving this open and i'll run the depreciation so this might take couple of minutes uh, so let's wait for completing the report i mean the concurrent program yeah uh, so we can see that so this is the asset that we added so that is uh, 338614 and we can see that uh, life of the asset that we opted for is 2 years so that is based on the depreciation method uh, that uh, we have taken and we have given in the category if you remember so in category we have given uh, this as a straight line method and for the period of 2 years so there we can change it okay and apart from that when we are adding the asset we said this uh, the original cost or the current cost of the asset is 1 lakh so based on that system has uh, generated the uh, depreciation okay so let's navigate uh, to the application and we will try to see uh, the financial information of the asset
So I'll just navigate to uh, inquiry and from here I'll say financial information. Okay, so now we can see that uh, there is a depreciation involved and uh, we can see that uh, the amount has been distributed. So this is 4166.67. Okay. Yeah, uh, so any doubt? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll just uh, do this one also. So we have <coughs> something called transaction history. <coughs> so transaction history will basically let us to understand the <coughs> what you call, uh, the detailed information of the particular uh, given transaction. So let's take uh, this one. So since I didn't uh, make any changes to the transaction, so I'll just take this one. So we can uh, see the details of it. Uh, <clears throat> so we didn't change cost of uh, this particular asset. So we could see the uh, original cost the same as the current cost. So now what we will do is that uh, we will try to change uh, the cost of the asset and uh, we will try to understand how this is uh, impacting our depreciation and our uh, current cost.
page so so this is the uh, other details so i have taken uh, the uh, transaction details of it so let me take this and uh, let me go back to the transaction screen So basically, we will see uh, the before and after and uh, the original cost. So if you see here, so basically the original cost will not change. So the change will be always on the current cost. So the original cost, even if you wanted to change, so this will be non-editable. Uh, so we cannot edit it. Uh, so this will be same. And if you see, so based on the uh, rule or based on the things that we have made changes, so system will calculate our uh, uh, what do you call uh, knock off the depreciation. So we will just run the uh, accounting and we will see how it is reflecting. So here I'll select for uh, data and I have the ca category. So in the category, I can say specific category, but uh, this case, I have done two, three transactions. So that is addition and I have uh, did the cost adjustment and the other thing. So I don't want to run it for a specific category. So I'll leave it open. And uh, the report uh, thing I have given as, as uh, detail. Okay. So that's it. I'm just uh, processing this to DL. So let's check the accounting entries. I set up actually the uh, budget for this particular uh, ledger. So that is the reason for failure. So I didn't add uh, the budget uh, values for it. So apart from that, uh, we are good with it. Uh, so, okay, le let's uh, review the uh, entry. So let me take the back and uh, let me query it in the GL model. So here we can see the asset cost has been debited and asset clearing has been credited. Okay, so this is for the addition. And uh, here uh, you can see, so this is uh, adjusted. So basically we will have the same entry 
but this will be adjusted because this will have the financial uh, impact in our books. So we changed uh, our uh, current cost from 1 lakh to 80,000. So which means 80,000 should be knocked off. So that's why we have reversed of the addition entry. So the addition entry would be always on the uh, asset cost to asset clearing. But in this case, if you see the asset uh, clearing is debited and asset cost is credited. Okay. So this is how system basically treats uh, the uh, entries or uh, the changes that we are making in the asset model. Okay, so we have added uh, the asset and we have depreciated and uh, we have made uh, the adjustments to the asset. So now what we will do is that we will try to retire an asset and see like how the uh, the asset is impacting and also we will try to understand the uh, reinstatement. So before that, uh, let me open the books. I can see that uh, cost is uh, this much. Yeah. So what I'll do is that I'll, I'll just uh, make one unplanned uh, depreciation asset. Basically, we'll have uh, the unplanned uh, depreciation as an achievement. So I'll just uh, run the create accounting one. So to have this effect.
¿No? Uh, sorry, I was in mute. Uh, so what I was saying is that, so I have this February period. So for the February period, so basically the actual depreciation uh, for the given period is 4,000 as per the uh, calculation that we have given. But whereas if you see, we, we did an unplanned uh, depreciation adjustment. So even though that is an uh, depreciation adjustment, still the system will cal consider this as an adjustment amount. So this will come as a thousand adjusted. So the net of uh, distribution, I mean the depreciation amount is 3000. So apart from that, uh, due to the cost adjustment that we have made, system has adjusted its uh, depreciation amount and system has said that uh, the depreciation calculated on the current price or the current uh, uh, cost of the asset is 3000. Okay, and uh, we can see the uh, changes here that is 65,000 is the current cost of our asset. So, this is the net book value. So, when we are seeing uh, the uh, return down value method, we saw something called net book value based uh, depreciation. So, which means here in this case, I have given straight line method. So, since the depreciation method is 3000 system has automatically taken 3000 for the next period asset. But if I have enabled this as a return on value method, which means system is going to calculate on this particular amount 65,000, but not on the original cost and populate 3000. So that, that will be the uh, difference. Okay. Uh, so apart from that, we retired uh, one uh, what do you call uh, the one uh, quantity or the unit of asset. So because of that, so we have actually the change in the accumulated depreciation and total net book value. Okay. So this is how the financial information will be changed. And here, if you see, we will have the remaining life. So which means we have uh, consumed or we have processed or uh, the depreciation for one period. So that is for the February period. So system is saying that uh, we have consumed it for one and we have one year, 11 month remaining to be consumed. Okay. So this is our understanding. Yeah. Uh, so what else we saw this thing? Mm. Okay, uh, we didn't do this one. So we don't use this one. Yeah, so this is for the mass depreciation adjustment. So the unplanned depreciation that we did is for the single asset. So let's say we have uh, what do you call the list of assets that we wanted to have the depreciation adjustment. So we will have here like mass depreciation adjustment. And what we will do is that basically we will uh, run based on the parameters or the selection criteria that we are giving. Okay. So that's it one thing. And uh, apart from that uh, production, uh, we are not uh, doing it. Uh, but if at all we wanted to use it, the production based uh, depreciation. So this is where uh, basically we will uh, give the details for the production. Okay. So we will give it here. So there are two options. So either we can give it here manually or probably we can upload it as well. Okay. And uh, we have a few mass transactions that we can do. So if you see, so we have uh, the asset transfer. So if you wanted to do the, so this all things are all our, uh, I mean, the functionalities that we are seeing it here will be based on the criteria or the parameters that we are inputting here. So for example, if I wanted to do an asset transfer, so what I'll do is that uh, I'll just uh, pick the particular book and I'll, I'll say uh, the transfer. 
so in case i don't wanted to transfer between uh, this thing or let's say i wanted to transfer between department so what i'll say in this case is that i'll say from location 1 to location 2 which means from chennai to hyderabad i'm transferring this particular asset Okay, so this is the condition that uh, I have given. So based on this, uh, basically system will process our uh, transfer. So similarly, we will have our changes, revaluation, retirement, and uh, reclassification. So reclassification is nothing but uh, changing the category from one category to other category. So that if you wanted to do, so we can do. Uh, so similarly, so we will have uh, which uh, classification to which classification should system consider okay so basically we'll have the new uh, category so based on the system is going to uh, perform uh, the category change okay so these are the things and uh, apart from that anything that uh, you wanted to see or any doubt Hello. Yeah, I am able to follow it. Yeah. Uh, so we are good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let me know if you want to uh, see any specific thing. I mean, I have covered almost uh, all the functionalities that we have at uh, in the fixed asset. So maybe if you want to see a specific case, uh, we can see. go through if there are any doubts yeah yeah sure sure anytime anytime you can get back to me or maybe you, if you can ping me in the uh, group also that should be fine or maybe tomorrow we can meet and uh, we can have this yeah just go through this uh, session and uh, if you have any uh, doubt or you need any clarification let me know yeah yeah okay. share me the yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm sharing and that the Excel sheet. Though. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm sharing the Excel sheet and the video right away. You'll get it in 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks for joining. Thanks, sir. Thanks. 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 Thanks.